Hello everyone and welcome to the session. My name is René Ramirez. I am the manager of the MySQL Shell team and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to migrate to the MySQL database service using the dump and load utilities that were released in the latest version of the Shell. We want to hear from you. Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A chat, chat at any time. An expert will be on standby, ready to answer your questions. If time allows, we will also answer some questions at the, end, at the end of the session. Let's take a minute to let clear that the content of this presentation should not be taken as a contract or a commitment about how things described in this presentation will be delivered on the product. Everything on the presentation is for informational purposes only. We are promoting the migration to the MySQL database service or MDS. In, in case you still wonder why this is a good decision, let's quickly review some of the, of the reasons. First of all, it's pretty easy to provision new MySQL database instances. You just need a few clicks and you will be there. The service relies on the second generation of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, which guarantees that your data not only is going to be secure against external attacks or misuse, but it will also be compliant with any regulation. The service is also based in MySQL Enterprise Edition, which is a guarantee of performance, security, and uptime. The service is compatible with on-premise setups, so you can seamlessly move work logs from your, from your current setup to the cloud, and then and even have um, hybrid architectures. The support is, is awesome. We have you have the entire MySQL team behind this. They have developed the service, they maintain it, and they support it. In a single point of contact, you will have experts backed up by the engineering team at all time for all your infrastructure. And probably the most important reason is the cost. You can lower the cost by using the service, so you can save time and money by managing your infrastructure with a fully managed service. How to get there? In the last release, the MySQL shell included some utilities that allow you to create logical backups of your data and also to load them into new instances. These utilities can be used to easily move your current setup to MDS. It doesn't matter if you are talking about a cloud solution such as Amazon RDS, Microsoft Azure, or if you, are, you have your on-premise instance, you can create a dump of your data, store it in OCI object storage, and then use the, the shell utility to load it and into uh, a MySQL instance on the cloud. The utilities are quite, are quite simple. They are exposed as APIs. Uh, so for example, to dump an instance, the only thing you need to specify is the location where your dump is going to be placed. There are some options that allow you to change what is going to be included in the dump and also uh, there are options to uh, that allow you to ensure that your data is going to be compatible with MDS, and that there are other options that also allow you to uh, store your data into OCI uh, object storage. But other options are available. Uh, you can get more details just running the shell and then uh, asking for help with the dump instance or dump schemas functions. To create a dump, uh, it, it's quite simple. You just need to run the dump utility in the same network where you have uh, your, your data because you're, you're going to be required to create a connection to the source instance. And then if you want to store that information in, an, in all object storage, uh, what you need to do is to give access to the object storage. And it is done by using an OCI API key, which is uh, set up using the standard procedure documented in the OCI documentation. So dumping an instance is as simple as running the utility, indicating where you want to store it. In this case, I'm using the my dump folder. And then because I want it to be stored in a bucket, I indicate the bucket name. And I'm using this OCI MDS option uh, to, to, enable, to tell the utility to verify that the data is compatible with MDS. The load utility is kind of similar, so you only need to specify where uh, your dump is located. So there are options that also enable you to uh, define what should be included uh, when, when doing the load. So you could probably not load everything, or you can as you want. 
And there are obviously I options that allow you to define if in case your dump is located in an object storage, you can define the bucket name where it is located. Uh, there are of course other options that we are some we are going to see them on this presentation, but to get the full details, you can just uh, launch the shell and ask for help on the dump function. When you're trying when, to load the, the dump into MTS, well, of course, you need uh, to have a connection to the target MTS. And for that reason, you need to execute the load utility on, an, on a computer instance, because uh, it is there from there where you, where you will be able to access the MTS. If your data is located in, in, uh, in a bucket, in OCI object storage, there are two ways to get the data. So the first one is that you can set up an OCI API key in the machine where you are running the load operation. But if that's not a possibility, uh, when, when you create a dump in object storage, there will be pre-authenticated requests for every single file contained in the dump. And a, man, a, a file called manifest.json is going to be created, and this file is going to contain all of those uh, the links to, to, to the files that are part of the dump. So the only thing you need is you, you need to create uh, a pre-authenticated request for this file, and then use this file as the URL for the log utility, and everything is going to be loaded just like that. Let's go for a demo about how this uh, is done. Okay, for this demo, <clears throat> I have created a MySQL instance in Amazon RDS, and I have preloaded the employees data set uh, that is available on the MySQL uh, homepage. And I also created uh, an instance on an MDS instance, and I have also a compute instance. So for to, to load, um, well, the computer instance is needed because I don't have, there's no public access to the MTS, so I need to, to log into the computer instance and then execute the shell right there to do the load. And I also have I prepared a, a bucket that contains, uh, uh, that will contain uh, my dump. Here I am connecting uh, to the to the instance in Amazon RDS. As you can see here, we have the employees data set, which is the one that we are going to be migrating. Let me create the dump. So I want to start the dump on a folder called my dump. And then I want it to I want to store it in, in, in object storage in a bucket called uh, my bucket. And because I am doing the migration to MTS, I, I want this tool to verify that uh, the data is valid. So I will enable this uh, option. I will execute it right now. As you can see, there are some errors. Uh, we are going to review this uh, in a bit. But in general, uh, there are some restrictions that are in place uh, in, in uh, an instance in, a, in, in the cloud. This is, uh, for example, not, not all the grants available in a standard instance are available on the cloud. And there are some restrictions about uh, how the objects will be created. So these errors are detected because we specify the OCI MDS option uh, and, and we can fix them using the compatibility option, for example. Strip restricted grants will fix the, the forbidden grants uh, on the fly. And the same thing with the, with the structure of the object, objects uh, using strip definers. So I will just re-execute the operation, adding those options. This time, everything succeeded. We are going to be uh, there. Are going to be some notes about things that are being fixed, and the dump process will uh, start. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to get connected to the 
to the compute instance that I will be using uh, for to load the dump. Now you connect to the target instance. You can see there's there's no employee schemas. I will just load it. And to load it, I just need to specify, specify the folder where I put it. My dump and the bucket name. And the load operation is going to start. As simple as that. The dump operation, I mean, uh, the, these utilities, uh, we, we have two dump utilities. We have dump instance and dump schemas. Dump instance is used to dump a full, in the, all of the data in, an in, in a MySQL instance. And dump schemas is used to load specific schemas only. Uh, these utilities were built with these characteristics in mind. So security, as you saw in the demo, uh, the utilities rely on the security models offers by, offered by MySQL and OCI on the consistency area, but the consistency is guaranteed in both dump and load operations. We are going to see more details about that. They are extremely fast. I will explain uh, how they work internally and we will see why they, they are really fast. They are flexible uh, as there are options that allow you to define what should be included in the dump. So uh, for example, you can um, filter what's, what, what is going to be included in a dump and also filter what is going to be loaded from the DOM. So you can you have options. You don't have to do uh, everything at the same time. Uh, we have uh, the MDS, MDS compatibility, as we saw in the DOM. I mean, in the DOM example, uh, we have this uh, OCI MDS option and the compatibility options that allow you to identify issues with your data and also to fix them on the fly uh, while doing the DOM. And well, as you saw, they are pretty easy to use. The consistency area. Well, this diagram describes uh, the the lifetime of the dump operation. Uh, so the red the red part is kind of the initialization of the dump, and then the green uh, area area is the dump operation itself. So during the initialization, uh, the tables are going to be logged just to initialize the worker threads. The worker threads are going to be in charge of looping the whole thing. So the threads, uh, in the, each thread is going to create an, its own connection to the source of data and is going to start a transaction. After that initialization is done, uh, uh, the instance is, is going to be logged uh, for, for backup and then the read log is going to be released. So this way we guarantee that the data is going to be consistent on the dump and, 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 and this has the less impact possible uh, on, on your running instance. In the case of the load, uh, there are going to be also several threads loading data. Uh, and as soon as, as soon as each thread uh, loads or completes a load transaction, that is going to be logged uh, or the, the progress is going to be recorded. In a way that uh, at any point you can cancel or, or you can do partial load of things. And the, the tracking is going to be that accurate that you can after uh, some time resume the operation and it's going to continue exactly on, on the place that it was left. In the flexibility area, we were talking about the filtering options. This slide describes what is included in, 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 in the dump. So we have schema, uh, DDL and, and, uh, and data. We have events, triggers, routines and users. So in the case of the users, uh, if you are doing a dump instance, uh, they are included by default on the dump. And if you are doing a dump schemas, they are excluded by default. Now, we have these options. Uh, so for example, um, for tables and schema, you can define whether you want to include in the dump, in the dump uh, just uh, the schema, the, the schema of the tables, or just the data. 
or you can filter it out uh, which schemas or tables you don't want in the, in the DOM. In the case of users, you can either enable or disable to include them on the DOM, um, or you can filter in or filter out which users should be included. Uh, for events, triggers, and routines, well, they are included by default, and but you can disable uh, with these options that are Boolean. So you set the, the options to false and they will not be included. In the case of the load, we have something similar. So you have a dump, but it doesn't mean you need to load everything. You, you can do it in parts, for example. You can load just the DDL first uh, and then continue with the data or just uh, load the data with some part of it. Um, or, uh, for example, you can decide to load the users or not load the user or not all of them. So that, that's how these filtering options work. And probably this is the most important slide when we are thinking about migrating to MDS. So the, the compatibility options allow you to, to tell the, the DOM utility to verify that your data is valid for MDS. Why is this needed? Well, uh, to be compliant with the OCI security model, some restrictions had to be put in place uh, on the MySQL in the cloud. Uh, those restrictions include, for example, that not all the grants are available for end users. Um, so if you have grants that are not uh, that are kind of forbidden in MDS, uh, they, they will not be used. And this still restricted grants options will fix that by removing those grants from your users. Uh, in the case of view triggers and routines, they use, there's this clause called SQL security definer, which indicates that uh, the security, that the, 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 the authorization is based on who defined um, the object, not who is using it. In MDS, that's not, that's the, it's forbidden. It has to be the one that is using the object. So that part needs to be removed. And this option will remove that from your objects on the fly. Uh, InnoDB is the only database engine supported in MTS, so if you have tables that are not InnoDB, you can force them to be InnoDB with this uh, force InnoDB option. And finally, table spaces are not supported. You can remove that from your schemas using this option as well. The best solution. We consider that uh, we are offering the best solution for this process. When a dump operation starts, the first thing it's going to do is going to write some initial metadata about the operation. This, separate, well, this metadata will contain information, of course, of, of what is contained on the DOM and so on. Then there are going to be several worker threads, uh, which is a configurable thing that defaults to four, but you can add as much as, you, as your computing power allows. Um, and then those threads are going to be start dumping uh, first the table schemas and then the table data. For the case of tables, uh, with a lot of data, they are going to be split in chunks. And at the end, you may end up having several threads dumping data for the same table. And finally, uh, some metadata is going to be written to indicate that the operation has been completed. Okay, on the, on the load operation is kind of the opposite uh, to, the, to the dump. Uh, so you will, uh, the, 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 the initial metadata is going to be loaded first to know what is the dump about. And then the threads are going to start loading the table schemas and then the table data. If you remind, the table data in for big tables was split in several chunks. So several threads could be loading data for the same table at the end. There are some things that are kind of the, the, the guides that we did for this. So um, that made this faster even. For example, each thread is going to be working on a different table. In addition, Big tables go first. That means that as, as soon as you start the load operation, the big tables will start loading data, which reduces the time, the waiting time at the end. And then the other threads are going to be in charge of the rest of the tables. And as soon as they complete them, they become available and they will start loading data for the big tables, which makes this faster. These are some benchmarks about the dump operation. Um, we compare uh, the shell with other utilities out there that can do logical backups. Uh, we included uh, MySQL dump, MySQL pump, and my dumper. And we use three uh, data sets, in this case on time, Stack Overflow, and Wikipedia. Uh, well, MySQL, MySQL dump is single threaded. There is no parallelization there, so it's expected to be slow. It's not just one thread dumping to one single file. MySQL pump has limited parallelization. It uses uh, one thread per table. 
The problem with it is that uh, on big tables, it becomes a bottleneck. So at the end, well, it's created one single file, so it's faster than my skill dump, but it's still slow. And then my, my dumper, my dumper uses uh, some an algorithm that's, that is kind of similar to the one that we use in the shell. The difference uh, is that they use uh, set lib compression, which is a little, uh, a little slower than set std that is used in the shell. Um, on the, the examples here, we can see that on time on stack overflow, the shell was by far the, the fastest solution. In the case of the Wikipedia, it was not. And the reason why is because Wikipedia contains a lot of binary data and the shell does a conversion to base 64 for that data and that makes it a bit slower in that sense. The last uh, group of bars shows all of, this, all of the schemas put together. And as we can see, the shell was faster there. In the case of the load, well, uh, we can see uh, that the shell is the fastest in all of the cases. Um, so we consider, well, in this case, well, it's clear why it's faster than my skill dump and my skill pump. In the case of my skill and or my dumper, uh, the thing is that uh, the, the algorithm that we are using that guarantees that big, uh, big tables are loaded first and that many threads are going to be loaded data from the same, for the same table, uh, that is what makes the shell the best solution. Now, that's not all. Uh, even we are um, here with, there are metrics about Shell being the fastest. There's one extra thing that Shell can do that the others, other tools can do. And this is that you can do both operations concurrently. This is you can execute the dump. And while the dump is in progress, you can execute the, lo the, the load. And then what is going to happen is that uh, the load is going to be pulling uh, the, the location where you are storing the dump, and the data is going to be loaded as, as the dumper is producing it. So that for this reason, we can, well, it's clear that the wait time to move your data from your current setup to MTS is going to be a lot uh, lower than with the other tools. And for this reason, we consider that we are, uh, we are, we have provided the best solution available. Okay, let's review how that works with an example. We can see here that the load operation completed. And now we have the employee schema. Let's get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to execute the dump operation again. Uh, I will just store it on a different folder. And the load operation as well. Let me show you something. You can, as I mentioned before, yeah, we can, you can ask for, for, for the help in the shell right there. We have this option. Which is going is this option is used to tell the loader that it should wait for the dump to complete, uh, and it gives a time. It's it's time out for how much time it should be waiting. It's given in seconds, so I will take thirty minutes, but it's not going to be needed. And of course, uh, I need to load it from the same folder where I will, where I will, I will be dumping. So I will just trigger the dump here. And as soon as the, as the dump uh, starts, uh, at this moment it's doing checks and verification of data. And as soon as it starts writing the, the files, it means the initial metadata is going to be already there, here. So now I can start the load operation. Here, you can see it detected that the dump is still ongoing. And as I told you, the data is going to be loaded as it becomes available. And this is how both operations can work together. And this is something that you will not find in any of the other solutions available out there. Okay, there are some additional considerations that you need uh, to have when you are thinking about moving your data to MDS. Uh, as, as my SQL has evolved, uh, there have been some times when you went to migrate to a newer version of my SQL 
you need to change your data. You need to fix things on your data because uh, something changed that is makes your data incompatible. Uh, and for that reason, well, if, if thinking on that and considering that a MySQL database service is built on the latest version of MySQL, then it is, a, a, well, you need to make sure that your data is also compatible with the latest version of, of MySQL. So for that reason, we recommend uh, to execute, uh, well, to use the great checker utility that is also available on the shelf. This utility is going to, in, especially if you have a version, another version of MySQL. This utility is going to create a report of inconsistencies and things that you need to fix. So those need, things need to be handled before actually uh, trying to move your, your instance to MDS. Now, in, in, in the dump and load utilities require MySQL 5.7.9, uh, but in the case of the dump, uh, you can create dumps even uh, from older versions of MySQL. The only thing is that not, the user data is not going to be uh, included there. I am letting here some links. Uh, well, we had the, the links to, uh, to the user guides of both utilities. There are some blogs already out there about uh, these utilities. Uh, I, I use part of the information there on this uh, presentation, but there are way uh, more details there. For example, there's a demo with a lot of data. There are uh, the benchmarks and how they were done, uh, and also uh, more details about how the dump and load utility works. Uh, I also let the link on how to set up an OCI API key, uh, which is what, what basically needed to do this migration. And of course, feel free to reach us at, at Slack. We are at the shared channel in the MySQL community Slack. At this time, we will use the remaining time to also answer some of your, your questions. If you have, but well, have been sent on the QA in the chat. If you, if you haven't already, feel free to ask any questions. Okay, here comes the first question. You indicated that loading a dump keeps track of the progress. What will happen if my loading completes and I trigger a second load on the same MySQL instance? Okay, um, so this load progress is kept by instance. So when you, when you do your loading, if it completes, the, the progress file is going to be, well, it's going to have all the information about what was loaded. And it, it's going to, if you trigger it again, but what is going to happen is that the load utility will review the, the progress file and will, will verify that the load has been completed. And it's going to tell you that there, there's nothing else uh, to load. So if you want to load to a different instance, then what is going to happen is, well, it, a new file is going to be created. This file is created using the unique identifier of the target instance. And in the case you, you want to, for example, to force uh, reloading uh, the, the, the same data to the same instance, for whatever reason, you, you need to clean up your instance first. You need to, to drop the schemas that were loaded, and then you can, uh, you need to delete um, the file, the progress file for that instance, and then retrigger the load. Uh, to delete the file, you can do it either manually, but going to the place where the, the, the dump was done and delete it, or you can use the reset progress option of the load utility, and that will delete by the way for you. Okay, the second question is coming. Um, it is clear that the throughput depends on the number of threads used. Is it possible that running a dump can impact the response time of a production server? Yes, that is a possibility. Uh, as, uh, as you saw, well, if, if the, 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 the throughput of the utility depends on, on your computing progress. You can specify as many threads as you want, but this is a heavy processing task. So there, there is an option, which is a max rate option, uh, that you can use to define the max uh, read throughput that should be used to avoid uh, falling into a scenario like this. Is it possible to interrupt a dump load? And if so, will the dump loader be smart enough to continue where it was left? Okay. Let's say that you start a load operation, right? And it's running. So what's going on there is the threads are taking the data. Uh, each thread is working on a transaction with a specific part of the data. 
so if you hit control C to interrupt the dump, what is going to happen is that the loader utility will store, will stop creating uh, more tasks uh, to fill the threads. So the threads are going to continue with the with the current transactions until they complete, but no new transactions will be will be created. In case you, in case you want to really cancel the the, the the load operation right away, you can hit Control C again. And then that will cause the, the current transactions to be stopped. In any case, uh, when the threads will record, as, as soon as they complete, they record on the progress file what was completed. So if you cancel the transactions, no data will be written. There's nothing to write on the record file. But if they complete, the, 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 the progress tracking is going to be updated. So in any of both scenarios, the progress file contains information of what exactly has completed on the load process. So the load operation can continue uh, exactly in the same uh, place where it was left when you canceled. Is it possible to change the schema while doing a load? No, that is not possible, but there's something that you can do about that. For example, uh, as, as we saw, there are some filtering options and what you can do is when you can trigger the load operation and for example just load the table schemas once that is completed you can go there to the target instance and do the schema changes you need of course as long as you don't break the compatibility with the data so you can for example add indexes or something like that uh, or remove indexes and then when you are done with your schema changes you can trigger another load operation to load the data that's how you can do that. Is it expected that the dump structure changes? Are there chances that future versions of the shell can handle a dump created with another version? Well, well, that's something we cannot say right now if there will be changes. Most probably, yes, and these utilities are, are, are kind of new. So it will depend on, on, on the future needs. But they are version. So the metadata file of the dump contains a version field that, well, it can be used to determine what is the current or the structure of that dump. And of course, newer version of the shell uh, should be able to handle uh, this, uh, well, older versions of the dump because uh, they, they should be made backwards compatible. Uh, next question says, the procedure looks quite simple. Will it be the same if my data is located on a different flow vendor? Well, yeah, yeah, I would say yes. In general, uh, there, are, there are two things uh, that you need, um, you need to have to be able to pull the data, right? So you need to, to be able to create a connection to the source instance, of course, and then you need to be able to run the transaction I and mean, the, the, the queries that are needed to guarantee data consistency, like uh, flush tables with read logs or flush tables or, or, or logging the instance protocol. So as, as soon as you can execute those operations, the process should be exactly the same because that's the only thing needed to pull the data. And yeah, so yeah, it's, it is expected to be that easy in any case. <clears throat> 